All right, we're replacing the drums and the rotors today on the Chevy Colorado 2017. Supplies for all second gen Colorados. Um, you'll be needing a few tools, some jacks, jack stands, um, something to remove the lug, lug nuts, uh, a 18 socket, a T30 screwdriver, a couple zip ties, something to cut the zip ties, and uh, that's about it. Let's get started. All right, so I got the truck up on jack stands. I have the rear axle supported by the jack in the back, although the main weight of the vehicle is on the jack stands. I just wanted to go as little off the ground as possible um, due to the gravel driveway, but I do have the blocks of wood so that way those jacks don't sink into the ground. Um, I already went ahead and broke the lug nuts on the wheels. And I'm just going to start loosening them up, take the wheel off, and start disassembling the rear disc brakes. So now that we got the wheel off, we can go ahead and look at the actual rotor itself. Um, we will need to end up removing this pin or bolt. Um, can't really see too well in there, but I know that my brake pads have been making a lot of noise. So that's why we're going ahead and replacing them. So there's two bolts we need to remove. This one up here. It's a size 18. There is one down underneath here, right here. Remove both of those. They're broke free, they can come out pretty easily. This is out, I just put it back in so I can grab the other one, take that one out. Before you take it out all the way, grab So I got a couple zip ties. I'm going to zip tie this to the actual rear leaf spring. And I'm going to want to go underneath that rear clip right there. In between that. So then that way I can remove that later and not have to undo the zip tie. Set these just right up on top so you don't lose them.
The reason why we zip tie it to that early spring is because the brake lines that are going to it, you don't want to put a lot of tension on that. You don't want to let it hang down, otherwise it could slip off or cause issues down the road. So we are going to want to remove this bolt right here, the screw, whatever it is you want to call it. I'm using a T Torx or T30. You can see that. Break it loose, and I'm going to take the screw driver the rest of the way. While you're in here, you can look at your parking shoe, your parking brakes, whatever you want to call them. Um, I knew that mine are relatively fine because I don't use them that much, but there should be good amount left on there, which I have plenty of life left in those. Um, there is also over here on the side, if you can see that right here, there's a little magnet. If there is a lot of metal in here, it will collect that. So if you want to get rid of that, just make sure it goes out. That little bit right there should be clear. I went with uh, AutoZone's Duralast Gold, um, they're a little bit better than just your standard rotors, same with the brake pads. Um, I figured if I want to replace them, I might as well upgrade them a little bit as much as I can without going too overboard. Um, I'm interested to see how they do, but you can see they look a little bit nicer. You're probably not going to see that much difference between the actual rotor um, I only have about 50,000 miles on them, so I probably could have gotten the rotors returned. But I figured if I'm doing it now, I might as well do everything. So I don't have to worry about it for a couple more years. Before you install the rotor, you want to make sure this area is all scrubbed down. There's nothing sticking out too bad. You can take a wire brush to it if you'd like to. I'd recommend that. Um, I've even seen some people put anises on this so the rotor doesn't stick to it. I'm not that concerned about that, so I'm just gonna send it. So when you're installing the rotor, you wanna make sure this hole down here, right there, lines up with the hole on the bottom that you installed that one bolt. And then, if you'd like, you can install or put on some anises or some uh, thread lock, whatever it is you want. I know I'm going to be okay, so I'm just going to put that back in. I couldn't find the torque specs to this, if there is any, so I just made it as tight as I could go. It wasn't on there too tight to begin with. Again, this is the T30. That I'm using for this. So that is good to go. For the brake pads in the rear, these just pop right on out. You can see there's not a whole lot of life left with that on there. It was worse on the other side. There's still a little life left on that, but they're making some noise. Um, this is a little chirper that they put in. And once it starts grinding away at the rotor and it hits the brake pad, the rotor slides and hits that. And that squeaky noise that you hear comes from that guy right there. There are also some clips you can take out and replace. The new kit does come with them.
You want to make sure when you're taking those clips off that you're not messing with anything over there. Um, sometimes you can get tunnel vision looking at those things that these things off the side will just get popped off or broken and you won't notice about it until you're in a predicament. So make sure you're checking everything to make sure that everything's still intact afterwards. So while I'm in here I'm also looking at the covers around these so there's this rubber boot around here that looks good but this one down here looks like it's falling off you can see it's leaking out over there I'm just gonna try and tug that back on over So I have the new brake pads, these are the new ones. They are the gold Duralas. Comparison to these to the old ones. This is a pretty significant difference. That one's pretty bad. But you'll see that there are two different kinds. One has some ridges, the other one does not. The one that does have the ridges is going to go on the outside, so it's going to touch on the outside of the rotor. And the ones that's smooth are going to go against this piston right here. So I rented this disc brake kit at AutoZone. Um, I only needed these pieces out of it. Um, yeah, you can just get a C-clamp, uh, but I didn't have a C-clamp, and you can rent this free from AutoZone. You pay $60, and once you return it, they give you your full refund back. Put them in without bending them too much. I just clip right into place. And again, I made that zip tie so I could have it just cut and I don't have to worry about that clip again. And then you push down, should just seat right on in. You do want to make sure there's no debris or anything underneath it or else it won't seat properly. Should be pretty good. Also, while you're in here, clean off the surface, make sure there's no rust. Uh, do be careful if you have a wire brush you want to clean that off because there is that rubber boot around there. You don't want to poke a hole in that and have fluid leak, leak out. Um, any kind of debris. I did have a dead leaf on the other side that looked like it was about to catch fire so make sure there's nothing else in here or around. You can go ahead and put the boots in. So this one with the bumps or the ridges in the back. It's going to go on the outside on this side of the rotor. And on the outside up here, so this is going to fit in here. You want to make sure that the actual pad is sticking inward.
you may have to tug back on these clips up here and at the top just to fit that in there all the way and it should just slide all the way back against that plate flat so there's no space in between those and then do the same on the inside so the inside is going to have that flat surface this goes on the inside of it this is actually what gets pressed into it So once you get both those brake pads in place and they look okay, you can go ahead and cut this zip tie again. Set that over in the rotor. And grab your nuts, bolts. You can put Loctite on these if you'd like. Get both of them started to make sure this is being supported. And hand tighten them. Come back and get your 18. Tighten those down all the way. You got them pretty tight, you can take the torque wrench. I have it right now at 80 pounds or so. Pretty sure it specifies for 80 pounds. It's all set. So just a final check. You got the brake pads. They're facing the right direction. The clips are in. That screws back on. Everything smooth and nice. No extra dirt or anything like that. All the brake lines look okay. We didn't do anything to damage them. So let's go ahead and put the wheel back on. Make sure there's no debris or anything in your lug nuts. So we're good, we're going to drop it and we're going to torque them down to 140, 140 pounds. That's what the uh, user manual says. So it's important, we just got the truck down off the Jack stands and jack. So we want to go back and retorque all the wheels, all the lug nuts. So I had it at 80. I'm gonna turn it up to about 140.
tighten it down. And for me, I have a 7 8 onto this key. So I got both sides of the rear discs and drums back on. Had everything torqued down, both left and right sides, and I retorqued everything. Um, I'm gonna do the fronts, but before I do that, I'm gonna take it around the block and uh, make sure that everything looks all right. And then I'm gonna come back and retorque down the back wheels. All right, so I drove around the block. Everything looked okay, it felt really nice to have Good working brakes that don't squeak every time you press the brakes. Um, I did go ahead and retorque everything. One thing you can check just to make sure that it was working okay is to check the actual rotors, and there should be some obvious wear. Um, for me, that mine were all blacks, so and all that blacks faded off. Um, you can go ahead and check that on both sides. That looks good. Both sides. In my case it does, so I can assume they are working just great. So now I'm gonna do the fronts. I'm gonna jack it up and I'm gonna do the first side and I'll come back for the left side. So we got the front wheel off, we got the rotor and uh, take out the backs. If you want to do just the brake pads themselves, you can pop this out, you push this down, you pull this whole section out, this little clip right here. And these brake pads will slide out that way on the other side. So on the new one, you put in the new clip that holds everything into place, and you're good to go. You don't have to remove any of this or any of the rotor to take off just the brake pads. So I'm working on the front, and uh, I want to go inspect my brake pads. I see there's actually quite a bit of light fluff in those, so I'm not going to end up replacing them. And the front rotor looks pretty smooth. There's no deep gouges or anything like that, and there's still quite a bit of life left in these as well. Um, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to replace them. Um, however, you can replace these brake pads without taking the actual caliper off of the rotor, um, but it is a little bit easier if you do take them off. They just kind of slide right on out if you take out the metal clip on the outside. Um, but again, with the front as well, with the T30 up here, you remove that, this rotor comes off, Put on the new rotor, put the new um, bolts in, put the new pads on. They're very straightforward. There's not anything really you have to clamp down in here. You just replace them, pull them out. Um, I did zip tie this up to the upper control arm just so it's out of the way, but make sure as well with the brake line back there that you're not putting any too much pressure or strain on that. Um, the same size bolts go in the back here unscrew them on the top and at the bottom down and through here. Uh, they're the same size, I believe it's an 18, as the rears. But that's where I'm going to cut it off at. Hopefully that helps you guys out. And uh, um, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe for more. This is my first video doing of this um, kind of DIY. And uh, Hopefully you realize how easy it is and uh, you can do it yourself and uh, have some fun and save a couple hundred bucks at least. So, uh, thank you.